Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is my June wrap up. I have got myself a new notebook for booktube stuff, which I got in, where did I get it? Paper Chase. And it's got this really cool quote, can you see? I think it's backwards. It says, uh, well behaved women rarely make history, which is Eleanor Roosevelt. And I saw it and I was just like, yes. One, it's nice and slim, so I can just keep it with me. It's also lined. Um, and I just saw that and I was like, yeah. And it was in sale, so that was like a triple win. So yeah. Um, so I'm gonna talk through the, how many books, sorry, 13 books that I read in June. Um, June was kind of a mixed month for me. Um, my mental health was a bit up and down, which was rubbish. Um, had some family stuff going on. Um, but we also had our first wedding anniversary and I will link last week's video below, which is our wedding film, if you wanna go and watch that. Um, and we just had a fantastic time. If you follow me on Bookstagram, which is at what Victoria read, you will probably be sick of it by now. Um, yeah, so it was a real up and down month. So we'll see what July is like. I've got two weeks booked off at the end of July, start of August with the boys. So I'm very excited for that. The first week is my solo Charlie week. So it's just the two of us. And then the second week, first week of August, we are all off on holiday for a week together, the three of us, whilst Gary's mum stays here to look after the cat and the house. So there's lots of good stuff coming up, but yeah, it was a bit of a mixed month. And I feel like my reading kind of reflected that as well, because let's just segue into the stats. So I read 13 books, uh, which was a total of 4,127 pages, which is pretty good. I think that, that's kind of my average at the moment, or has been for this year. Um, but my average star rating was 3.5, so it was okay. So I will get into the books. Um, oh, let's do genres first as well. I'm really good at this. So I read two nonfiction, one classic, three YA contemporary, which is actually a lot for me. For someone who said at the start of the year they thought they were growing out of contemporary, I seem to be reading quite a lot of it. One YA thriller, two YA fantasy, two crime slash thrillers, because who knows where the line is there, and two literary fiction. I also did DNF one book. So I started out the month with my reread, which was This Is Going To Hurt by Adam Kay. I listened to that on audiobook. If I can work out how to put a picture here, I will. If I haven't, it's because I haven't worked it out and I've probably thrown my laptop out the window. Um, yeah, this was my reread for the month and it was a five star read last year. I actually weirdly read it whilst we were away on mini moon. And also like, I read it the night before our wedding because I was so nervous, I needed something like really short and choppy, which is, which it is. Um, and so I ended up accidentally reading it at exactly the same time this year, which was kind of nice. Anyway, um, yeah, it's still a five star read for me. I listened to the audiobook, it's on Audible, would really recommend it, although it's really short, it's only like four hours. So I'm not sure it was the best way to spend my credit, kind of tactically. But um, yeah, really enjoyed it, it's heartwarming, it's funny, um, it made me cry at the end, again. Um, yeah, would very highly recommend it. My next book was, oh, my classic for the month. Oh, I loved this. I loved it so much. And that was Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. Firstly, I think I've shown this before in the haul, but it's just, it's just the nicest edition. I love this. I love these editions. Um, I'm definitely, I bought another one for my July classic, which is going to be A Little Princess. I just love them. I kind of want the whole, I want to read the whole selections so I can have them on my shelves. Anyway, Little Women, it's obviously a really well-known classic. This, it turns out, is just the first volume. There's a second volume, which I'm definitely going to read at some point. And then there's also a third one called Joe's Boys. I think that's the order of them. Um, anyway, we're following four sisters. Um, I think it's, I think it's the American Civil War. The father's gone to war anyway. And we're basically just following their lives. This was really warm. It was rich. The characters are really well-defined. Um, it's very gentle, like nothing particularly bad happens in the first volume. Um, I've kind of, I know the story of the second volume and I thought it was gonna be in this story as well, so I was kind of braced for something that didn't happen, which is fine. And yeah, I just I adored it, just loved it. Um, jo is fantastic, she's the main sister that we follow. Um, most of it's told from her perspective. I found it really interesting because she, you know, she wants to dress as a boy and do boy things and she just wants to be herself and that's what I took from it is to always be yourself whether you are headstrong and confident and you know out wanting adventures or if you want to be at home and be quieter and kind of softer and calmer that's fine as well and yeah I just I just it's, I thought it was lovely I didn't have any expectations at all going in 
but I absolutely adored it. And then, weirdly, I found out that it was my mum's favourite book as well, so I didn't know that. So that was a nice connection. Right, next. So I've got too many lists. Uh, what are this? What are we to? Oh, yes. I read the second in the Spencer trilogy, which is How Hard Can Love Be by Holly Bourne. I read the first one, um, Am I Normal Yet? for Mental Health Vaughn in May. I read this in June. And then this month, um, Nicole and I from A Beautiful Chaos of Books are going to um, body read the third book, which is called What's a Girl Gotta Do? I think. Anyway, this one. The second one is Amber's story. She's in the first book because each book is told from a different girl's perspective. This is Amber's story. She goes to America um, because her mum left several years before the book. Her mum was an alcoholic. She um, got together with her therapist or counsellor or something and then left Amber behind with her dad and went to America to basically start a new life. And Amber is obviously incredibly hurt by her mum's actions. Her mum's never come back to visit. She doesn't really call. They don't have a relationship. But her mum and her mum's new boyfriend have basically bought a summer camp. And so Amber is 15 or 16 and she goes out there for the summer to be a counsellor at the camp and try and kind of reconnect with her mum and spend some time with her. And this was five stars. I gave Amma Normiette five stars. This was five stars. I just adored it. It was heartbreaking. It was funny. There was a great romance. I, I'm really not... If you said to me, what don't you read, I would say romance, and there's a romance in this, but I just loved it. I was completely on board, it was completely believable. Um, Amber was really unsure of herself and how she was feeling, and that was portrayed really well. Um, the stuff with her mum was genuinely heartbreaking. It almost made me cry a couple of times. I don't cry very easily with books, but this got me pretty close. Um, there's also stuff about feminism in here because the girls are still running their, their spinster club, which is where they talk about feminist issues. Uh, I mean, there's conversations about like slut shaming, um, which was handled really well. And yeah, it was just cracking. And I really love these additions. I'm a fan and they've got really cool spots. It's gonna look very cool on my shelf when it eventually gets there because I'm gonna make everyone I've ever met read them. So yeah, that was a five star. Right, next. I read Sadie. So I listened to Sadie on Scribed. Again, I will try and put a picture here if I can. If not, you probably know what the cover looks like. Um, I listened to this on Scribed. Is that how you say it? Scribd? Scribed? Whichever. The audiobook service. Um, and I just picked it up on a whim because I'd already spent my Audible credit. Didn't want to spend more money because I'm tight. And I saw Sadie on the recommended ones and I've heard loads of people talk about it. So I picked it up with no expectation, which is probably a good thing. And it's one of those audiobooks, I think, if I'd read the physical book, I'm likely to have DNF'd it. But for some reason, if I'm if it's on Audible, if it's an audiobook, I finish it. I'm not sure what that's about. That's a discussion for another day. Anyway, so Sadie is about a girl called Sadie, whose um, little sister has been murdered. And she basically goes on um, a road trip to find the man that she believes has killed her sister. And then there's also a second perspective, which is a guy who's running a podcast, he's a journalist, and he gets told to basically cover the story and he follows her and tries to track what's going on and he talks to her family and her friends and he kind of follows along behind her. So it's multimedia, so there's obviously the two perspectives, but then there's also um, like excerpts from the podcast and I think there's... Are there newspaper articles and stuff? It, yeah, it's very clever and like text messages and things like that. Um, I gave this 3 out of 5. I really like the audiobook, so I would definitely recommend that. I think if I hadn't listened to it on audio, if I'd finished it, it would probably have been a 2 out of 5. I think it was interesting. It didn't really do anything particularly groundbreaking to me, but I read a lot of thrillers, and so a YA thriller is unlikely to kind of sweep me off my feet. Please feel free to correct me and recommend me a good one if you know of any. So yeah, it was fine. The audiobook was full cast, which I love. It's definitely my favourite kind of audiobook to listen to. Um, yeah, it was fine. And I'm happy I've read it. So there we go. Next was Legendary, which I have here because my lovely friend Amy lent it to me. So this is the follow up to Caravel. It's right up the front. Um, this is the second book. We're following the other sister, um, Teller. Is it Teller? Yes, <laughs> you can see how much of an impression this made on me. So the first book is set in the world of Caravel, which is this um, magical game. Um, this is the second book, we're back into the world here. Um, following the second sister, I don't really, 
I can't really remember that much about it, which is quite bad. I gave the first one three stars. I gave this four stars. I enjoyed it more whilst I was reading it. I felt kind of more swept away. I much prefer Teller as the protagonist in Scarlet. I found Scarlet a little bit wet in the first book and a little bit weak, whereas Teller's got real backbone and, and like real oomph as a character, which was great. And I was interested in following her along it does definitely suffer from middle book syndrome. There is a third one, but I'm actually not sure what the third one's called. Is it Finale? I'm not sure. Um, yeah, it definitely suffered from that because loads of stuff was set up. A few things were dealt with from the first book. More stuff was set up, but that wasn't concluded because there's going to be a third book, which I would read. I'll probably get it from the library or if Amy buys it and wants to lend it to me, that would be fine. It's a beautiful edition. They are very attractive books. Just not quite clicking with it but yeah again it was fine it's kind of been the theme this month a few really good ones and then just some average ones as well okay after that i read educated by tara westover so i think i mentioned this in a v in a fairly recent video i've had this for ages it's non-fiction it's tara's memoir about growing up in a mormon end of days family so her parents or her dad more specifically believed oh, I've got to move because my leg's going numb um, believed that the end of the world was coming and that he had to protect his, himself and his family so they would stop fire, try again stockpile food and guns um, they didn't believe he didn't believe in going to the hospital so their mother uh, became a herbalist and a midwife and there were some really horrific descriptions of accidents that happened her dad ran a yard a uh, scrap yard there are some really, just to warn you, there's some really detailed and visceral descriptions of accidents that happened to her and her brothers um, because of her dad's negligence. Um, so be aware of that. Um, and it's about her basically breaking free and finding a way out via an education because they were also homeschooled, although they weren't really taught anything. They just weren't put into mainstream school. So yeah, it's about how she went from that and ended up at... Cambridge so it's a difficult because it's obviously somebody's life but I gave us a two out of five I found it really quite dull in places um it's quite big how big are you it's like 400 pages and I felt like you could easily have taken 100 pages out and not noticed it was quite repetitive I felt like she was trying to get a message across but we just never got there um yeah so I was quite disappointed with this. This was my non-fiction for the month and I didn't love it. Sorry. After that was another audiobook. So I've listened to quite a lot of audiobooks. I've got really into listening to them on the drive to work instead of listening to the radio and also having headphones with me so I can listen like on my lunch break when I'm walking around or when I'm walking from the office to the back to the car. So that's why I've been getting through so many of them. The next one that I listened to I really enjoyed which was They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. Um, this is, I would call it speculative fiction, it's not dystopian, and it's not fantasy, and it's not magical realism because there's no magic, but it's set in a world, in like a parallel world to ours, where there is a service called Deathcast who can phone you and tell you which day you're going to die. So you basically get a call the night before, and you're told that the following day will be your last day, and without fail, everyone that gets the call from Deathcast dies on that day and what I quite liked about it was that you don't really get you don't get any explanation as to how this happens why it happens how death cards no there's no kind of like fighting against the system and trying to stop it which I felt like we've kind of seen a lot before in YA fiction um and it was just actually nice just to spend some time in a world like that with two normal people who aren't trying to fight or change anything on their last day so we follow two boys who get matched on an app for deck, what's called deckers because they're going to hit the deck and die. Um, and it's about their friendship and their relationship that grows over the course of that day. And they're very different. One of them is very um, neurotic and shy and prefers to stay in his room and play video games because he doesn't want to deal with the outside world. The other one um, has lost his parents and his sister um, in an accident not long before. And he's been living in a foster home and he is very street smart and he's quite tough and he's part of this gang um, and he's very confident and so they're very different um, but they just fit together really nicely and yeah I really really enjoyed it obviously 
it's called They Both Die at the End. That's a spoiler. Um, but you kind of... I really got on board with them and you kind of... Even though you know they're going to die, you kind of hope that they'll find a way out of it. And it was lovely. I think it'd make a really fantastic like Netflix series or film. I, I could really see it in my head as a film. And yeah, it's my first Anna Silvera and it definitely won't be the last because I really enjoyed it. I did give it four out of five. It wasn't quite a five star for me because for me, the emotion was almost there, but not quite all the way, but I would still definitely recommend it. Then I had my DNF for the month. So I showed these books in my recent haul. Um, and I start, I tried to read the first one, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo by, is it Stieg Larsson? Larsson? <sighs> yeah, I read this a long time ago and I remember it being okay. And I thought I'd reread it before I read the other two that I've got. I was, oh yeah, that was the other thing. I said in that video that it was a trilogy. Turns out it's not, there's like six books. Didn't know that at all. But anyway, I thought that I would reread this and then read the other two that I've got. I got 25% of the way through and I had to give up. And I feel really bad because I talked about it a bit on Twitter and Instagram and loads of people were like, oh no, it's you should keep going, it's worth it, just push through the first 100, 200 pages um, and then it gets better. But for me, if I have to push through 200 pages, that's like two days of reading, I'm, no. <laughs> Um, other stuff I'd rather read. I just found it really dry and boring and we were meeting so many people and getting like the whole life story but the actual story of this was going nowhere. So yeah, I I, I gave up. These are not for me. It's absolutely fine because my father-in-law is currently reading the first one with my brother-in-law's edition so I will just give him these. He can have his own and yeah, that was disappointing. Very disappointing. After that, I read On Chesil Beach by Ian McEwan. This again was a reread. I read this, must be 10 years ago. Um, and at the time, I don't think I was ready for it as a reader because at the time I remember thinking, wow, that was boring. Um, this time I read it, I think I gave it four or five stars. I loved it. It's very short, it's 150 pages. It's it's tiny, this edition. <laughs> I got the book bar on second hand and it's a little bit wonky, but we'll live with that. So I threw, flew through this in about an hour and a half um, and there's so much emotion and story in 150 pages, it's incredible. So we're following a couple on their wedding night, it's in the 60s, yeah 1962 and it's basically about miscommunication and misunderstanding and fear of sex and not having the vocabulary to talk about that with each other. And it's one of those things where parts of it, like I was getting secondhand embarrassment for them because it was just like, oh no, no, like, oh. Um, and then I was also getting frustrated because I just wanted to shake them both and make them have a conversation. I just adored it, it was lovely. I think I gave it four stars actually because the end I felt was a little bit rushed. But um, I will definitely be looking at more Ian McEwan. I know he wrote Atonement. Um, so I might have a look at that, but if you can recommend me any others, then please do in the comments. After that, I read on my Kindle, I read um, The Summer Children by Dot Hutchinson, which is the third in the Collector series. I read the first one, which is The Butterfly Garden, the end of last year, um, which I absolutely loved. It was fantastic. I read the second one, Roses of May, earlier this year, which I found really disappointing. Um, for a number of reasons, but you can find my wrap up for that. Um, and this is the third in the series, and we're basically following um, a group of policemen detectives who work with children that have been abused and like murdered children. And I can't remember what they're called. Child? It's not like child protection, but they basically work with kids that have been abused or murdered or whatever. So it's very dark, very very dark. The first one follows a serial killer called the Gardener who kidnaps girls, young women and keeps them in his um, massive greenhouse and kills them and keeps their bodies. It's horrendous. The second one, you can find my, my wrap up for. Um, this one, I really enjoyed and I gave it four stars, read it very fast. It's back up to the standard of the first book for sure. And we're following a female detective and she basically starts having kids delivered to her front door covered in blood holding a teddy bear and saying that the angel has sent them and the angel has murdered their parents and so you're trying to work out what the connection is between her 
the people that are being murdered? Does she know the angel? Like, how is it all connected? It's very, very gory. Is that related to going to sleep again? Uh, it's very gory and graphic. Not for the faint-hearted, but I really enjoyed it. So if you're into that kind of thing, I would definitely, definitely recommend it. Next, I read Ghost Wall by Sarah Moss, which again was lent to me by Amy. Um, this was shortlisted, long-listed for the Women's Prize of Fiction this year. It's tiny. Again, it's 150 pages. Yeah, exactly. 150 pages. This edition is lovely. And it's got... I always take the dust jacket off and it's got this lovely, like, red cover. Um, this was such a weird reading experience. It's only 150 pages long, so again, took me, like, an hour to read. Um, we're following Sylvie, who is with her parents. Her dad is very abusive, so there's trigger warnings for that, physically and mentally and emotionally abusive. Her mum is terrified of her dad, and they are doing a reenactment of an Iron Age, I think. Yeah, they're living... Yeah, they're living on an Iron Age site for a couple of weeks in the summer um, with some archaeological students and basically recreating how people lived. I um, can't really say any more than that because it's such a short book, I would definitely give spoilers. It's The way it's written is really odd because we're in Sylvie's head, she's quite strange. She's got a very odd way of looking at the world and I felt really removed from what was going on. It's one of these books where you kind of read it and then a couple of days later your brain suddenly goes that's what she was talking about, that's what she was describing, but she's so removed from herself that you are as well. I think I gave it three stars. I didn't love it, but I am glad that I read it. And then after that, I think I've got two more. Yes, I have two more, one audiobook and one physical. So the last audiobook that I read this month was On the Come Up by Angie Thomas. Again, chose it at random from Scribed. I read um, Thug, uh, The Hate You Give, even. <laughs> Sorry, I read Hate You Give last year, absolutely adored it, thought it was amazing, um, found it really important and interesting and absorbing, and so when I saw On The Come Up, I was like, yeah, I'll give that a go, I'll listen to that. Again, it was a, no, it wasn't a full cast, it was one narrator, but she did all the voices for everyone else, so much so that it felt like a full cast. She was amazing, and I would definitely look for more audiobooks with her. So with this one, we're following Brie. Um, she's called Rihanna, but everyone calls her Brie and she wants to be a rapper. Her dad um, was a rapper, he was killed. Um, she lives in the same um, town, like city, part of the city, as the characters did in um, The Hate You Give. And she does reference what happens in The Hate, what happens in the Hate You Give, but they're not like directly connected and we don't meet any of the characters from that story. Um, and it's about her life and following her and her family and her friends. And it talks about poverty and racism and activism and standing up for yourself and using your voice and I thought it was fab. I didn't love it quite as much um, as The Hate You Give. I think I gave this one four out of five stars, but I still very much enjoyed it and I would highly recommend the audiobook. And then, you'll be glad to know, the last book that I read this month was Enchanté by um, Gita Trillis. Can you just take in this cover? Because it's stunning. So I saw Kath from Stranger Reader talking about this book a while ago. I think she got an arc of it and she was saying how um, fantastic it was and she really enjoyed it. So I put it on my TBR and it came up. So we are in 19, oh no we're not, we're in 1789 in Paris, which is towards the end of the reign of um, Marie Antoinette, just before the, Re the French Re Revolution kicks off. And we are following Camille. Um, she is an orphan, her parents have both died of smallpox, we think, although I don't think it's ever that specific, but they've died anyway of some illness. Her brother, Alan, is um, an alcoholic and a drunk, um, and he's physically abusive, so her and her younger sister, youngest, her only sister, um, basically run away from him. And Camille has the ability to use magic to turn everyday objects into coins. So she can turn like bits of metal into a coin, but the glamour doesn't hold. So she has to be careful how she uses it. Um, and then she finds in um, their attic, she finds a dress that belonged to her grandmother. And she basically puts it on and it transforms her into looking like a noble. And she can then go to Versailles and she spends time like turning cards and basically trying to con people out of as much money as possible. That's the basic premise. There's a lot more going on in this book. Again, it was also quite big. It's nearly, five, is it 500 and something? No, 469 pages. So it's big, especially for a YA, um, for a YA book, it's quite big. Um, there's a lot more going on in this. There's also a romance that I really enjoyed. There's adventure um, and, and some really good like 
intrigue, court intrigue, we're also getting into the politics, like French politics at the time. Um, and it's about Camille, again, kind of finding herself and finding a voice. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. I gave it four out of five stars. It wasn't quite a five star for me because I felt like the pace dragged a little bit, um, sort of in the last third, it could have gone a bit faster and there was a little bit of repetition. Um, but I, I will definitely be looking for more from this author. She's apparently going to be writing another one set in this world with these characters and I will definitely pick that up because it swept me away and I really enjoyed it. So those are all the books that I read in June. I've been talking for 25 minutes, so I will leave it there. Please um, leave me a comment if you've read any of these books or if you're planning on reading any of these books. Let me know what you've enjoyed this month and I will see you in the next one. Thanks guys. Bye.